There we go. Um, can I get this full screen? Hi, guys. Um, I'm Sven. I'm also a contributor to the DAO with the Node Operator Mechanisms uh, work stream. Normally, I'm telling people to unmute, and I actually forgot to do it myself now. So uh, um, I'll be taking you through uh, Venom. Venom is not something new. We've been doing that since, I think, late 20, 2021, Q4. Um, but I'd like to take you through the whole Venom report, uh, nevertheless. So, hold on. So what is what is Venom to start off with? Uh, Venom is a, was a dashboard we made, and it shows a variety of metrics, um, all, all related to the protocol's validated distribution. Uh, and it spans across uh, different points in time, like uh, a quarterly, quarterly data. So the metrics include information about uh, client diversity, infrastructure, geolocation, uh, jurisdiction dispersion. Um, and since uh, last quarter, Q4 2023, we are also including some preliminary metrics on censorship resistance. Um, it's just min bid right now, but we're looking to expand this uh, particular um, uh, segment. Uh, the main data set, uh, like the input for this dashboard, comes from self-reported data from node operators in the curated set, and they do report on a quarterly basis and uh, we ping them every quarter to make sure that they uh, that they do so the data is accurate and complete and up to date every time. Uh, the report comes out uh, usually about four to five weeks after the quarter ends, and that's because there still is a lot of manual processing of this data um, involved, and that always takes time. Um, and there's a lot of node operators involved who actually have to submit the data. So uh, that also takes takes a bit of time to get that all straight. Um, so taking through most of the components, I'm not gonna take you through all the details. Um, I actually showed the QR link where you can follow along there. This one, so you can scan that follow along if you want. Um, that's the public site, you can play around with it. Um, starting with the basic stats, um, so looking here at this uh, graph specifically, we have 35 node operators. Now, people involved might know that we have um, historically onboarded 39 operators. Uh, of those, we have um, one merger, so that's uh, a one down. We have Jump, who has offboarded, chosen to offboard from the curated set. Uh, Develop has um, onboarded only recently, and they weren't running keys at the end of Q4. They are running them now. And we have Imstones who exited all their uh, keys in November. Um, it seems like a simple chart, but I want to take you through it anyway. So what this shows is the active validators per node operator. Um, the orange line there, that's the what we call our soft cap. So this represents the uh, 1% of all active validators on the entire network. And the goal is to get each individual node operator to a point where they are running less than 1% of this, of this soft cap. Um, now withdrawals were made possible in uh, May of this year on the Lido V2 up upgrade. And uh, you can see that um, some node operators are still running above the soft cap and some are running uh, below it. Now, as the new node new node operators get onboarded, um, withdrawals and exits um, are prioritized to go to these um, node operators that are running more or uh, an amount of stake above the soft cap, and uh, new deposits are being prioritized to go to the node operators running below it. So, starting with the lowest active count first, as long as they have keys available to deposit to. Um, a new number we're showing now is the percentage of stake above the soft cap so that you can see that as um, basically the blue area above the orange line. And we're trying to get that to zero, obviously. Um, also in the basic stats, um, the distribution quality metrics. Now we use two metrics for that, the Gini and the HHI, which is, as you all know, the herfindahl hirschmann index. I usually make an effort. Um, and we try to get this one as low as possible as well. So a lower Gini and HSI as well represents uh, a more equal distribution, where zero would be a perfect distribution. Um, 
and the the it's a bit offset by the amount boarded. So to explain rating on the chart in the left, it was at an all-time low in Q2 of last year, and it actually increased in the last two quarters. Reason for that being is that we have new node operators coming on board, and they have uh, they need some time to catch up. So they start obviously with zero validators, zero keys, and they will get um, deposits routed to them and increase their active key counts and uh, catch up with the rest. Uh, which means that in the time until they've caught up, there's actually a less equal distribution where the older node operators have a much larger, or not a much, but a larger share of um, of validator keys. So like to compare below, you can see the distribution in Q2 of last year. And above that, you can see the distribution of Q4. So while there is a total of node operators is higher in Q4, the equality, the distribution of the keys was uh, um, less equal according to this rating. So that should improve as um, newer node operators catch up. And in fact, they have improved and we'll see that in, in, in Q1 of 2024. Um, another aspect or some other metrics that we um, obtain from our node operators through, through self-reporting is the infrastructure. So um, this particular graph shows the server types. Um, generally, when we do um, onboardings, the LNOSG um, uses these metrics as well, and they uh, try to favor um, less represented uh, server types. So for Lido on Ethereum Wave 5 in last, what was that, August, a lot of focus was on uh, non-EU and USA-based uh, node operators uh, running um, bare metal uh, servers. And we define bare metal in our case as dedicated, co-located and on-premises because they're, they're all offered as bare metal uh, and less so on public cloud because that's overrepresented currently. Um, uh, below, uh, on the pie charts below, you can see the, the distribution of bare metal uh, server providers and also public cloud server providers. So that's the part. Um, so that's the distribution of these particular segments across the different uh, providers. And naturally, we try to encourage uh, node operators to, um, to find a, a balance there as well. Um, we track... We track a bunch of different stats regarding uh, geolocation. Uh, this particular one is the percentage of validators uh, running on servers in um, in different countries. Uh, interesting to see for this quarter and actually last quarter as well is that um, in Africa and Latin America we have um, uh, starting to show it's starting to show that we have uh, validators running there. Um, their performance started off uh, not that well, but they've actually improved quite a bit over the last weeks, which is very encouraging to see. Um, naturally, we expect a lower performance in 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 these areas, but but so far it's it's going it's going pretty well, and uh, um, definitely not uh, not in the in the low end, but in the I think in the mid ranges currently these the performance. So that's that's very encouraging. Um, I think that's also due to the to the work that that these node operators have been doing in uh, in performance increases. Um, generally, we're not looking for perfect performance, but uh, the goal here is to uh, to maximize distribution. Um, of course, um, if we can do that at a higher effectiveness, that's that's always good. Um, so, a new topic this quarter is the min bid. Um, now, if you go to the actual report, there's a lot of reports on min bid as well. Um, in short, the min bid is a setting on men, on uh, on MevBoost, where node operators can choose to uh, produce a block locally um, if the value of that block is below a specific value, and that specific value would be the min bid setting. So, for example, a testant um, they are uh, considering increasing their min bid, but currently it's at 0.035. So, if the rewards for a specific block uh, that they are uh, that they want to propose is below 0.035, they will opt to uh, produce that block locally um, instead of um, getting that block from a relay. Um, and this is um, a great way to bypass the relays. And this is also really, really good generally for 
uh, censorship resistance. Um, now, if you go to the report, there's a bunch of links to external uh, dashboards that really did a great job on uh, on showing censorship resistance. I think Tony Washtetter is uh, particularly uh, um, someone who makes great dashboards showing the effect of of these settings on on the on the censorship resistance of uh, specific node operators, uh, validators, uh, running validators, but also relays and, and block builders as well. Um, that's, oh, the link is not there. I think it's censorship.pix. I highly recommend you take a look at that. And um, we'll be working on uh, getting more of that data um, from our node, node operators on this, uh, on this report as well. Uh, currently, there's only four node operators with a min bid setting. That is not zero, and all the other ones they are uh, currently zero. Um, and they've been filtered out for for visibility. Um, moving on, or actually back to client diversity. So first, uh, CO consensus layer diversity. Um, on the left, you'll see the general uh, distribution across Ethereum across the entire network. Um, across Lido, it's well, it's more or less similar. We have um, a lower uh, usage of Lighthouse and Prism and um, uh, a big usage, like a lot of node operators are fans of Fouch. Uh, I think we had uh, Jim on last month explaining um, what Fouch is and and and, and uh, presenting the, the new beta version of, of Fouch. Um, in short, it's a, it's a dedicated uh, validator uh, client that can be connected to multiple validators at the same time, I think. Uh, that's uh, Nimbus, Teku, Lighthouse, and Prism. And it can use strategies to determine uh, which of those uh, clients is uh, best for specific scenarios. So a testant, for example, um, uh, does use Geth, but not for attestations. And that really um, mitigates most of the, the issues involved with the supermajority, with bugs in supermajority clients. So so while they are using Geth, it, it doesn't... Um, um, impact the the well, they won't be affected if there's a if there's a bug in Geth, which has been a topic of discussion as of late. Um, I won't go through this chart entirely, but um, we have the consensus client distribution of each individual node operator. Uh, we also have this one for the execution layer as well, so uh, that might be interesting to look at. Um, and Moving on to execution layer. Um, so as of Q4, 2023, uh, the curated set is running uh, on 67% uh, geth, which is actually almost a 12% drop compared to the previous quarter. Um, now, skipping this. So that 67% is actually, um, it's, a, it's a, um, the latest, uh, update in, in in a trend that actually has been going on since the the merge, where a lot of uh, stability was um, where Geth was found to be much more stable than the alternative clients, and slowly um, has been um, being replaced has been replaced by by other clients like mainly Nethermind. I think they did a big update last summer um, and really showing that they are uh, very stable uh, as well and can be can be relied upon. Uh, Almost as good as Geth currently. Um, now this this uh, movement is uh, is going to be continuing um, next quarter as well. Let's see if we have that here. Yeah. Um, so we have um, Izzy reached out on the forums and asking node operators to um, publicly commit to uh, improving um, execution layer diversity. Um, shout out to Yorick. Uh, Yorick down there, of course, because he's been relentlessly um, like pushing this issue of, of uh, diversity, client diversity, and not just in January, but I mean, before I joined contributor, he was he was pushing this, pushing this on all the channels that he's on, which is a lot, I think. So um, this uh, call for uh, public commitment uh, was met um, quite overwhelmingly, like a lot of node operators um, committed at this point, that there was also a, a big movement going on, of course, online. Um, I think we've summarized the current status and I think it's, can count it now, um, quite quite a big uh, 
by turnout of these uh, public commitments, uh, a lot of them on the actual post, some publicly on on, uh, on Twitter. Um, and now the status for these particular commitments are in different stadium, a stadia, uh, different phases, uh, but range from uh, completely reducing uh, the usage of geth, for example, for P2P, kiln and all nodes to, to, to zero, sensei node as well, to a, a more diverse setup for, uh, for other uh, node operators. Um, and the preliminary preliminary numbers uh, looking at Q1 is that if if all these Q1 commitments, because that's what they are, if all the if they are all um, if they are all met, which we'll see at the end of Q1, then we're looking at um, a get the usage for the Lido curated set for in the low 50s at, at 50 52 percent or something like that, which is uh, really encouraging. That's the that will be the I think the biggest jump so far. So that's a, that's a really positive note to to end on, and uh, a, a great job on all these node operators for really taking that seriously. Um, it's not easy to uh, to take uh, the big cluster setups that they that they're generally running, and migrating them all to a different uh, uh, client. It's not just the client itself; it's it's the whole supporting infrastructure. So this is a big migration for some of these node operators, and uh, kudos to them because that's 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 due in the entire network, by the way, because I think it's a massive undertaking. That uh, that's really being uh, this challenge is really being met uh, in this quarter. Yeah. So down the road, um, like the Vanom report didn't start out in its current form. It's it's evolved over time, and not just because of um, contributors um, thinking and improving. It's it's a lot of discussion online. Um, so we definitely do value your input. We do see a lot of other. Um, maintainers of dashboards and, and and these types of statistics, um, openly discussing um, the ways these these metrics should be um, should be defined, and and we definitely welcome their input and uh, and also uh, um, engage with them as much as we can. So um, yeah, reach out on the on the on the forums on our Discord, email us. We have a Telegram as well, uh, all over the place. We'll we'll send links, share links in the in the description of this uh, YouTube video, I guess. So that's it for Phantom. And uh, I think that's it for uh, the NOCC as well. Uh, back to you, Izzy. <laughs>